Welcome back to Sports Talk ATL. I am Chase Earl, joined by Alex Sword. We just talked about the starting pitchers and the trade deadline. It's fast approaching. It will be here before we realize that this is the nitty gritty. This is where the fun rumors start. This is where we start getting an idea of what everybody needs, who's going to be buying, who's going to be selling. But we both agreed, and we've agreed on this for months now. And now that AJ Mentor has hit the IL, I think this is strictly precautionary. But still, when I see shoulder inflammation, I'm like, oh. I hate the word shoulder inflammation when it comes to pitchers because, as I've said time and time again, we saw it with Kyle Wright. These things re-aggravate. They linger. Now, this could just be strictly precautionary, and he might not even have a shoulder injury. He's, he was complaining about pec tightness, and then he goes down with shoulder injury. So I'm just hoping that they just gave him a designation and said, here's two weeks off. Have a good, t- have a good time, uh, AJ Minter. We can't risk you getting injured. I'm hoping that's what this is. Still hate to see it. Still think you have to take it into, into consideration that he's injured. Nick Anderson's on the 60-day IL. What With what? A dang shoulder issue. Those things linger. 60-day IL, you're talking about two months. I mean, it's backdated to July 8th, so the earliest he can uh, return is September 8th. I saw people talking about Nick Anderson like, oh, this could just be rest. He, he's been injured. He's only thrown 35 major league innings. That would be a 15-day IL thing. 60-day IL tells me something totally different. You're not just resting a guy for two months down the stretch of the season where he's going to have to make rehab starts, and the earliest he can return is the middle of September. So that's a red flag to me. Nick Anderson's had so many problems. It's a huge blow for not only the Braves, but his career. And then you still have Jesse Chavez, who last I heard, he's still walking on a cane. I mean, yes, it's a bruise, but it's clearly worse than we thought originally anticipated. And then you got Dylan Lee, who said no, no setbacks. We did get a good injury report on him. I think he'll be back around August, and, and they're just taking things very slowly with him. But still, all these injuries, expecting all these guys to come back and be who they have been this entire season, I think is foolish, um, especially Jesse Chavez, who had like the best half of season of his career. I think it's foolish for him to miss two months, and then you just expect him to be that guy. Who knows with Nick Anderson if we even see him. AJ Mentor, God bless. I hope he can come back. But you now have a lot of injuries here. We already thought you needed to go out there and get an arm, and now it just seems like this is a no-brainer. Like Everyone's talking about starting pitching. I don't care about starting pitching. Go out and get me a bullpen. Go out there and, and give me the best bullpen in baseball. Make this thing a juggernaut. You got enough starting pitchers. Your lineup's already a juggernaut. This is the easiest place to add. This is where the Braves need to target going into the deadline. Yeah, and I don't think it needs to be, you know, a, a half measure. It needs to be a full measure. You know, use the Vaughn Grissom trade chip. Uh, I'd be much happier trading Vaughn Grissom for a high leverage bullpen arm than, you know, the back of the rotation starter. Um, that pill is much easier to swallow, willingly swallowing that pill. Um, yeah, it, it was even before AJ Minner went down. I needed that, you know, setup guy. I needed that seven, eight, nine inning, you know. Even before we, Nick Anderson we, and AJ Mentor went down. Before them, yeah. I was still saying, yeah, go out and get a guy. Now it's like, do you go out and get two guys? Because, like, I want to load this thing up, man. There's nothing. And we saw it in 2021. When you have a bullpen that can come in and shut you down, that is the biggest weapon you can have in relievers. These starters come playoff time. Once they hit their first hiccup, unless it's Max Freed or Spencer Strider, some guy you really trust, they're going to be out in the third, fourth inning. Even the guys, we had Ian Anderson throwing no hitters in the World Series. He was out by the fifth inning. So, like, that's playoff baseball. That's playoff baseball. You need these guys that pitch fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth innings. That's a weapon. And the Braves have that when healthy. But now you got all these injuries. Go go out and get a few guys. Go out and get get a couple guys. Not even one. Get two. Yeah. I mean, it's got to be – It's something's going to happen. There's absolutely no way this trade deadline comes and goes without at least one – reliever coming to town. I, 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 there's no way um, Alex Anthopoulos is probably scouring phone calls, looking at his options. And I, I, we talked about it before. There is no obvious pathway unless you think he can become a, he can dramatically improve his defense at shortstop. There is no path for Von Grisham with the Braves as currently constructed. You might as well and his value, he's still raking in Gwinnett. He just hit a grand slam last night. Uh, his his trade value is still high. I don't even care that he came in uh, at the beginning of the year and struggled offensively and struggled mightily defensively. I don't care. He's still a valuable trade chip. And like I said earlier, I am the biggest proponent of we're not going to hoard our money. We're not going to hoard our assets. You spend and you get rewarded. You know, we need to maximize our chances to win a world series and trading Von Grisham does just that. It can get us a high leverage bullpen arm. Uh, and I see, you know, it's the obvious answer. That's the goal. 
whether the value is there is is a is a different question. Whether Anthopolis thinks that you know that price is too high for this player, um, you know, yada yada yada. It's got to be at the forefront of his mind, especially with all these injuries. I think it was before the injuries he was thinking, you know, what are we going to do? Um, you know, we have a surplus of like, you know, middle relievers. And there's not that many high leverage guys. Besides A.J. Minner and Rossiel Iglesias, there wasn't enough. And I know Kirby Yates is like kind of found his groove back again. And that's an exciting um, development. But you just want, you know, I know Kirby Yates is proven, but. I just don't want to risk that. I want somebody right here and now. Like you said, Kinley Jansen. Like, I want everybody to bump down one. That is the kind yeah, the of luxury problem, I problem want. The Red Sox are hot as hell. So, yeah. I don't think Kinley Jansen is going to get moved. If he does, I, like, he was number one on my list. I still love Scott Barlow. I, I'm not even against, you know, I mean, we talked about him last week, Josh Hader. I don't love trading for all-star relievers that are on rentals because they're going to cost much. And if you don't win a championship – uh like it, it's really not worth it because you're probably not going to resign Josh Hader this off season to a, a the hundred million dollar contract that he's going to offer or that he's going to want. That's just not an Alex Anthopoulos is mo. You know he's had plenty of opportunities to do it. He's consistently passed on it. So, but there are names. There's going to be a lot of guys. And listen, with all these four guys, I'm not even against. Like, yes, you want I want the high leverage guy, whether it's a Barlow or something like that. But I'm not, I'm also not against adding another middle reliever into the mix just to make sure, like overkill it. Like you can get these guys for pennies on the dollars. I don't even care if it's a seller's market. Overkill this bullpen. Make sure you have enough arms because especially if, if something happens at the starting rotation, that's going to put even more emphasis on this bullpen, on guys like Colin McHugh and Michael Tonkin. And then you're going to need guys to pitch after them because they might be asked to, you know, go out there and pitch in the fourth inning of the playoff games and pitch the fourth and the fifth and the sixth and the seventh and stuff like that. So I just think overkill it, just overkill it, get as many arms as possible, get guys who throw it hard, uh, get guys that are lottery tickets that don't cost much that you think you might have a better chance. I mean, think about the guys that they got offensively at the trade deadline in 2021. There were a lot of lottery tickets. There were a lot of things that they liked. They didn't perform particularly well, but they got them all for pennies on the dollars and they were, they found something in their swings. This is a similar situation that you can do with pitchers. Find something that, hey, his peripheral suggests he's in for some positive regression. Let's target him. He hasn't had the best year. Let's do that. You can do that two or three times, and all of a sudden you feel a lot more comfortable with this group. Yeah, uh, I like the overkill <clears throat> adage uh, that, yeah, the starting rotation might seem a little thin right now, but that's because Max Freed is coming back. Um, and you want to talk about, you know, one area to overkill, it's the bullpen. Like you said, Come playoff time, you need four starters. You need four starters. And if you add Max Freed back like we all expect, 30 pitches, next it'll be 60 pitches, uh, another time after that probably 80, and then you know he's right there about to, ready to return. Uh, and then you got your four horses right there. Even without you know that fifth guy who's just going to be a revolving door like we both think, the bullpen is not like that. You're going to need bullpen arms. And I, a surplus of bullpen arms is never a bad thing. Like you said, Bryce Elder runs into a little trouble in the playoffs. He's getting yanked. He doesn't have that, you know, that uh, build up the um, the trust with Snicker and the coaching staff that Max Freed does, that Charlie Morton does. And hell, even Charlie Morton, he runs into some trouble. I don't. I'm not necessarily going to leave him in there either. You no. know, Spencer Strider's got this stuff to get himself out of any jam possible. So you let him go a little bit ways. But you need bullpen guys. You need a surplus. I love that. Yeah, overkill the bullpen. And one thing I want to talk about before we wrap up this segment is AJ Smith Shaver maybe being used out of the bullpen. Um, you know, I, like I think he's got the kind of stuff that could be very, very effective out of the bullpen. We saw him get used out of the bullpen as for his major league debut, and he's fantastic, was able to throw multiple innings. I think that kind of guy, that hybrid reliever uh, that I talk about all the time, very, very valuable in the postseason. And even if it's just eating, you know, innings like, in a five zero game where you're losing, where you're saving guys. Like I think he could be very valuable in that role. So I think I'm interested to see how they approach AJ Smith Shaver, especially with Colby Allard being injured and stuff like that. Do they put him back in the rotation? Do they try to use him in the bullpen with all these guys down? We talked about him a lot. He definitely now has a role, a potential role on this team with all these injuries. I don't think there's any doubt about that. So I'm very intrigued to see how they approach that coming up after the break. We're going to talk some Pascal Siakam. Is he coming to Atlanta, man? Is he coming to Atlanta. <laughs> 